In today's video, we are going to be breaking down Kyle Kuzma and how he shoots the basketball. He has a fantastic shooting form that is absolutely amazing. Very similar, actually, to Clay Thompson. So let's get down. Let's check out Kyle Kuzma. So in this clip, what we have is Kyle Kuzma stepping up for a three-point shot from the point. So what do we see here? Well, he receives that ball, and he receives it at his chest, but he dips it down to his hips. From there, that's where he's setting up for his shot he is up on his toes now this is a very important fact right here that every single player needs to know and that is your calf muscles those are super important those are fast twitch muscles those are the muscles that are going to get you off the ground quicker meanwhile your thigh muscles are going to be able to get you up higher these two muscles work in tandem together to give you a fantastic shot and a very deep shot at that. When he does dip, what he does is he has his shoulders over his knees, but they're not over his toes. When he has a spot up jump shot, he however does have his shoulders over his knees over his toes this is just a step back and when you do a step back you generally want to have a slight angle on your body so that you can have the power to be able to get that shot into the net when he brings that ball up into his set point which tends to be right above his right eye if not just right in front of it if not right to the side it really does come down to what position he's in to shoot however what we do have right here is the ball being slightly to the right of his right eye and he has a close to 90 degree angle on his elbow this is important because that's going to give him a very fast release on his shot now from there what we do see is from going from his gather up into his set point, he does not bend his elbow all that much. Now, I've mentioned this in every single video, so I'm not going to go into great detail here, but the least amount of movement possible is the best because it's going to help you stay out of cold streaks and get past cold streaks much faster. We also do notice that his hips, as well as his shoulders, are squared towards the basket. Now, this is going to give a lot of players who can get their elbow underneath the ball a very consistent shot. If you tend to have your elbow flared out, you're usually going to have your left shoulder slightly back. But, by being able to get that elbow underneath that ball, you can stay squared up towards the rim, especially with your hips. And when you're squared up, thinking, think of your base being your shoulders, your hips, and your knees as your main aim towards the basket, all depending on what the elbow, shoulder, and ball do. From here we do see that his knees also bend forward towards the rim, again emphasizing that this is going to be a very accurate or at least a very consistent form. From there, he also has his right foot slightly in front of his left foot. Now, why you would do this is because now, this is going to give you a lot of power towards your shot. Now, we can see the power transfer from his toes up into his knees, up into his hips. His hips then extend forward, and then his body is straight up, like if a pole is through his back. Now, why is this important? Well, this is going to be a nice, accurate shot because he doesn't jump forward all that much, only slightly with that right leg, and I'm going to say that it's because of his step back why this happened. In most cases, he usually jumps straight up and then straight back down with only maybe six inches of forward momentum, and the reason for that is because now, if you start jumping forward, or sideways either way or even backwards what happens is when you start missing a few shots that may be one of your issues and if you jump straight up and then straight back down it's a lot easier to fix than how far you normally jump forwards or backwards when he does release this ball his elbow does stay above his his forehead which tells us that there's going to be a lot of arc on that shot. Generally speaking, you want your arm to be above 
45 degrees because now that's going to give you the arc you need to be able to get that shot in the basket. Remembering that arc on your shot is important because it's going to make that rim look bigger to the ball versus if there is no arc on the shot, the rim looks a lot smaller to the ball. Something else I like to look at is the flick that they have on the wrist. Now, there's a few different types of releases. There's the soft release, and then there's the hard release like what we would see with Michael Jordan or even Kobe Bryant at times. A hard release is not what we have here. We can see that his hand slightly curves out. So what this does is it allows you to have more arc on your shot, but it does sometimes take the backspin away from the ball. So this is something that's personal to you if you can find that you can get more than two and a half or more rotations on the ball with a soft release then at that point you would want to go with a soft release because it's going to give you more arc and you still get the rotation on the ball but if you find that you're doing a soft release and you're not getting any rotation on that ball and then at that point you would look at maybe trying to flick your wrist harder which would lead into more of a hard release like Michael Jordan where now you will get more rotation on that ball and in that case you would just want to release that ball a lot with a lot higher arc on your arm so that now you can have that arc but also that backwards rotation on the ball. Now something else that I really want to point out to all the players, watch his head when he's going for his shot. So when he receives that ball, as soon as he steps down on his right foot to take a step back to his left, he's looking at that rim. Now looking at that rim is going to do two things for him. For one, he's going to be able to aim a lot better, but also his peripheral vision to see the defender coming out on him to be able to say, hey, yes, I do have enough time to release this ball. Now, between all of this, this does come down to a perfect shot that he makes in this game. If you're looking to get more range on your shot, vertical jump training is very important to you. And if it is, make sure to go check out my vertical jump training book down in the description below. Other than that, I hope that you have enjoyed today's video. If you have, hit that like button and subscribe. I hope that it has made you into a better shooter in basketball. And I'll see you guys in my next video.